Hello, welcome to the new episode of Learning with Leaders. Today's guest is Joe Terry, CEO of Culture Partners. He will be providing some very interesting insights on how young professionals can identify the future employer and whether it's the right culture for them. Also, um, whether in company culture, learning from failures also has an important role to play. And last but not least, how important it is to also have a good physical fitness on top of being mentally fit. Enjoy today's podcast. Bye-bye. Welcome to Learning with Leaders, Joe. I'm really happy to have you here today. Yeah, happy to be here, Paco, and excited for, for you and I to have this conversation and, and bring some learning to your network. Yeah. Let's try that. Joe, yeah. <laughs> we know each other from... Um, some past connection experiences and you have been since quite some time in in marketing in learning in um, general man management positions and now you're again a ceo of a consulting firm which is from what i understood very much centered on company culture is that true that is correct yeah so we we help companies it's really an exciting place to be, especially now, Paco. Um, but we help companies unleash the power of culture to inspire their business and their people to reach their full potential. So that's what we're about is, is pulling the full potential of your people and your business through culture, through mm -hmm. culture. Is my assumption correct that, you know, when I'm looking at learning topics, um, learning topics which are on top of mind are resilience, well-being, um, and, uh, you know, this, this type of softer topics. Is the assumption right that on a company level, also culture is a topic on vogue? Yeah, I mean, um, you've seen this seismic shift over the last couple years where the power has shifted from this corporate hierarchy structure to the power going to the employee as people begin to shift their mindset and and look for fulfillment in both their personal life and their professional life mm. people are looking for more for them th from their employer than just a paycheck it's like how do i get fulfillment in my daily life and culture is the foundation of that which makes this so exciting in this seismic shift over the last few years and i think it's a shift paco that's going to accelerate over the next 10 years mm, hopefully so a lot of challenges are ahead of some of the international corporations yes it's yes interesting so uh looking back because um uh, we, I mean, this uh, podcast is uh, very much centered uh, to young professionals, especially. So, looking back at you at the early days of your career, Joe, do you remember any memorable, particularly impactful personal coaching or mentoring experience? Yeah, you know, I was, I was so grateful um, and blessed, I would say through my early years in my career to run into people and business people who had much more experience than me uh, that were willing to share that experience like we're doing on this podcast. Yes. But it was one on one and and um, I, I didn't always take it, you know, uh, mm. you're a young person and you're you're excited and you're, you know, the world's your oyster and you're trying to take everything in and you want it now. And, and, and people would explain some things to me. And I look back now and I can see how that impacted me over my career, not necessarily just in the moment. Mm -hmm. It's almost like Paco, that mentorship went into my subconscious and would show up along my journey, not just in that moment. You know what I mean? 
Yes, I, I, I know so much and so well what you mean, because I can, when I reflect, it's exactly the same for me. Um, do you think there are young people or do you know young people around who are already at the young stage and early years even better able to absorb this advice and are more open to that? And, and if so, wh why do you think this is the case? Yeah, that's great. Great question. I believe, um, and because I'm mentoring quite a few of them, mm. I believe the younger people of, I'm so impressed with how much they do want to learn. Mm. You know, I feel like back when I was in my early 20s going through my career, I was open and wanting and, and, and asking for help but the the younger generation of today wants help and insight um, on this journey, and they're much more open today than we were. And I say we, meaning me. Um, yes, yes. You know, when 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 I was that age. So I, I'm extremely impressed with how many young people have approached me and and continued to ask for my help. And I love giving it um, and, because I've made so many mistakes. You know, I want to share those and accelerate their journey as best I can, right? Mm. So you're mentioning that you are in touch with a lot of uh, young, inspirational people. But obviously, uh, as uh, in your role, you're also uh, connected to and you work with a lot of very experienced leaders. So what, from your experience, what are the typical traits of those experienced leaders? Why are they where they are? Um, okay, so I want to make sure I, yeah, so we talked about the young people. So when I, when I interact with leaders today that mm. have gone, they're more mature in their career, you're saying, hey, what, what are some of the characteristics of why yes. they are where they are? Yeah. Um, Number one, <laughs> I would say that they're they're humble mm -hmm. and this humility and open, you know, this humility um, leads us to to this discussion you and I are having here and really the basis for for what you've put together in your podcast is it that this humility opens us up to this learning right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so i would say number one is um is humility that they're that they're humble and open even as they mature in their career um that that would be number one um if i look at another aspect um is they lead with heart mm -hmm. it's not about them you know and they're mm -hmm. always not always because we're always challenged with our own ego comes into the equation paco and we're always fighting that to be in service to others but they understand that they're there to serve and and it's almost um counterintuitive right mm -hmm. because because people think you need to do things to get to get you need to grab and and these leaders have been in service all along their career they're humble and they're in service along this journey and those are the best i've ever seen in mm -hmm. my life. so it's humility and in 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 service mm -hmm. um listening to you uh, and you um mentioned uh, the word uh, counterintuitive do you think that a young person can afford to also be humble and still be successful or only more senior people can afford to be humble? Yeah, it's a great question because Paco, I'm sure you hear this all the time, right? So uh, people say, oh, you should be patient and you should be humble mm. and you should give your money away and you should do this and that. And it's like, yeah, easy for you to say because you've got all that, right? When you have abundance, mm. it, it it seems easy, and 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 you know, 
you see these super wealthy people and they say, it's not about the money. And you're saying, <laughs> yeah, I remember as a younger mm -hmm. up and coming like, yeah, but I want the money, right? <laughs> um, and, and this is where the counter intuitiveness comes in into the laws of nature um, and where they intersect is um, I learned, I wish I would have learned this earlier and, and, I'm, and I'm answering the question, can a young person afford to be humble, mm -hmm. right? And I think that it will accelerate their career at a pace that they can't even imagine and here's the counterintuitive piece. If they do it with a giving mindset, always looking to serve, even though they're young in their career. And so the counterintuitive piece is this. You can't get anything in life until you give it away first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you, you lack love, give more away. If you feel like you lack money, give more away. If you feel like, wow, I'm not being respected in my role. Well, that's the universe telling you there's areas in your life where you're not giving enough of it away because it's a circular journey. And this has been a hard lesson for me to learn. But if a young person can really go into their early part of their career with a service mindset and humble and say, look, I am going to observe, I'm going to absorb it all and I'm going to do everything possible to serve my company, my friends, my loved ones, my, my coworkers. I, I'm going to do it with a, a, a service mentality because Here's what happens, and, I, and, and, and I've been here too, and I bet you have, we've all been here. As a younger person, and this is why this humility thing, it takes a lot of self-confidence to be humble. Exactly, yeah. And so if you, can, if you can step in to that insecurity and say, I'm going to be fine. I don't have to do this to get credit so that my boss says how great Paco is or how great Joe is. Mm. Right? If I'm just doing this for the greater good. There's gonna be bumps in the road and you're gonna be like, this is not working. So-and-so stole my idea or why did my boss get credit for some, doesn't matter, the universe knows. The universe knows. And if you can stay grounded in that humility and that service mindset, and stay at it with patience, it will come back in abundance back to you. And that's the hardest lesson I think as a young person is to be patient mm. with the laws of the universe to circle through, right? <laughs> yes. So li listening to you, uh, Joe, um, now my, my next question goes more because, I mean, you are busy with, you know, the culture aspect of, of a company. So how could a young person when um, starting or when wanting to start in, in a new um, company identify that the culture there is the right fit for me? What, what are some of the key elements of that culture? Yeah, so <laughs> that is a really... <laughs> I'm is, so sorry, Joe. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that is a beautiful <laughs> question, Paco. I'm embracing it with everything I have to say how, boy, that's a, that is, that is. I, I give you an example, Joe. So it, it helps me probably. Uh, one of my um, uh, um, learning with leaders talks was with a, a former Henkel colleague of mine, Dr. Björn Jakish. And he is now, I think, still in Singapore. And, you know, he told me that when he is doing uh, interviews with young people, the one key aspect he's trying to understand is whether the young person's ability and eagerness to continue to learn and learn and learn. 
right. not right. to be full, right? So if you are confronted with that type of question in an interview, that gives away some of the culture, probably not necessarily of the company, but of that person. And that person in this moment represents the culture, right? So Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I believe, and it's it's extremely extremely difficult um, for a young person, one because they don't have the experience, mm. um, but two to have that intuition as they talk with multiple people in that company, because culture is happening every day in every communication. It never stops. It is a living, breathing organism within the company, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it shows up, just as you said, in these conversations, you know? And the challenge is, is that a young person goes into, let, let, let's, Let's do this from the interview perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So how does a, in the interview process, how does a young person determine to, is there a fit in this culture? And so it shows up, it shows up in, in that interview process. And, you know, what I believe is a great culture and a great culture fit for me is completely different, not completely, but it's different than it is for you. You know what I mean? And there's some aspects in your value system and what you believe that you hope a company exhibits during this process, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and so through this interview process, in every, in every company we work with, <clears throat> there's not one culture that's the same. <laughs> You know, because it's, it's, it is like, it's the difference between you and me, you and me share a, a, a lot of the same values. We've talked a lot. We've been in deep conversations. I mean, when I met you, you and I connected on a level that intuitively we believed, Hey, there's a connection here there's an overlap of what we believe. And I think that's what the, the young person should be looking for in those conversations. And they have to separate, here's the hard part, is separate that desire to get the job. Yes, exactly. From that, mm. because in the end, that culture will be the dominant factor of whether they're happy or not, mm -hmm. thriving or not. That paycheck will get old, that title will get old, the ping pong tables and the food in the refrigerator will get old. Even, even the car, even the car get old. Yeah, <laughs> the car will get old, the expense account, the travel, what, all of that have a shelf life the values that that we jointly mm. share will not and so i would i would just encourage a young person as they're going through that process look for the overlap in your values does does your intuition is so strong mm. so strong and let it guide you mm. And see if you can pull the ego away because the ego's fighting to say, I want that job, I want that paycheck, I want this, I want that. And it's trying to override your intuition. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, so trust that intuition. It is the greatest gift that the universe has given you. Yeah, yeah. fully, fully get you. Um, so culture for me also is a one, let's say, um one one how to say one way to identify a culture i think especially nowadays with all with all the pressure all the harmonization of processes is how a company deals with failures or what we normally do you know recognize as failures um what what is your uh, view on that Yeah, I um, 
I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take that that question. So I believe the question is about how companies deal with failure. That's where you can really see where the culture shows up, right? Is that in some parts, in some parts yeah. at least, yes. Yeah, and I I would say I would say there's two aspects of this. And it's a really interesting and profound question. It seems like a simple question. But again, if you're a younger person and you're in your career, you can look how the leaders, if it's a public company or even not in the leadership meetings, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can see if if the leaders in the company begin to point to circumstances outside as the reason for failure, mm. you know fundamentally there's going to be challenges in that culture because that goes all the way through the organization. Well, wait a minute. The, you know, uh, then the next level of leadership is like, well, you know, I, I didn't succeed because the vice president of manufacturing didn't manufacture the part, the products enough. And then the vice president of manufacturing is like, well, I didn't have enough. You know, I've got a supply chain issue, so I can't get the parts in. And that's why it didn't work. And then the people that order the parts you know, are saying, well, you, you didn't tell me soon enough to order and, and all of a sudden, but that starts at the top, right? That's that cascades through the organization. So I would say, watch at the top, watch that dialogue mm. and watch how they're interacting and are they interacting from a place of service or are they interacting um from a point of um scarcity mm -hmm. where where you know there's only so much and you know our competitors did this and that you know that doesn't matter if you just focus on internally right that's where abundance comes from and so i would say I would say that, and then I would say this, I, I would give this advice to young people as they're looking at how the company interacts. Do the leaders talk more about, you know, our values, our return to shareholders, and, you know, um, uh, making money, and then, and then are the, does the employee come in down at number four or five? Mm -hmm. Right. Or is that, you know, um, Richard Branson, I love what Br Richard Branson, whether you like him or hate him or think he's crazy or whatever, but he's always talking about the employee like mm -hmm. it, that's the first thing. And he's all when he had no money and when he was losing millions of dollars, he's like, it's all about the employee. If I take care of them. Mm -hmm. They're going to deliver world class service, world class sales, world class manufacturing, whatever it is, right? And and so listen, listen to the dialogue of those leaders, you know. And 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 is it more external talk, you know what I mean, externally, or is it more internally, where it's about our culture and it's about our people and it's about developing them and their why I'm where I am and their why we're achieving the results. And then if you're not achieving the results, look to see if that leader's taking accountability and saying, we're not achieving results because I didn't do this, 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 and this. Am I taking accountability, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a key word here, I think. Huh? Yes. Yes. So yes, uh, thank you. So we 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 learned, uh, and um, um, you, you're living in California, uh, and uh, so I mean there is no direct link, but obviously with the weather being nicer than in the German parts where I'm living, 
it's probably easier to be a sports person like you are. So yes. you're doing, uh, from what I understood, a lot of sports. So what is, from your viewpoint, the importance of physical and mental, the balance of finding the right balance between physical and mental well-being or fitness? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, for me, and when people ask me this question, they said, you know, so I do Ironman. Mm. Is, is what I train for is to do Ironman races. And I've got five races, you know, four half Ironman coming up and and the Ironman in Hawaii coming up this year in October, the world championships. Um, that was, <laughs> we were supposed to do it last October and now we're going to do it this October. And so people say, well, why do you do it? You know, and and I encourage people um, to take care of their physical body, not for why you would seem, oh, it's healthy and you look good and all those things. Those are, those are uh, results of that. But for me, I tell everybody, they say, well, why do you do Ironman? And I'm like, well, um, it's about the mind. I don't like to swim. Mm -hmm. I don't like to bike and I don't like to run. I, I don't like any of those things. They're not my favorite things. It's not like, oh, I just love to go out and ride my bike today. I don't like doing those things, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I do them because there's a process to it. And I do them and I train because it helps me train my mind as a leader. Mm -hmm. And so, as a leader, if you can train your mind to put yourself in a place um, of, of challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Of where, where you're in this race and you're like, I don't think I can run another mile. You know, you're, you're two miles into the marathon after two and a half miles swim and 112 mile bike. And you're like, I want to quit. Mm. And and how do you how do you break that challenge in your mind because that shows up every day in our lives. And so I do this training throughout the year in the races to train the mind to overcome adversity because that's life, right? Mm -hmm. And I want my team and my company to know that I'm in service to them. And when I wake up, even though I don't want to do it sometimes, I'm like, I can't let them down, right? I can't mm -hmm. let them down. I have to bring the best of me today because they're counting on me to deliver at a world-class level. And even though I don't feel good, and even though I don't want to do it, or even though, you know, we lost a big deal or, whatever you got to come back and do it again and it in in sport and exercise and that physical exertion helps build that synopsis in the mind so even if it's like you it's early in the morning as you said in germany and it's cold and you say I, you know i i got to do a 3k walk today you know I, I'm really tired and it's cold outside and I really don't want to do it. What you, the, the benefit you derive from overcoming that and actually going out and doing that 3K walk and coming back and succeeding at that builds that muscle in the brain for you the next time and the next time and the next time. And it builds that grit for you over time and that's why i do this and that's why i encourage anybody whatever it is whether it's walk run bike swim hike whatever it is get out in nature every single day force yourself to do something physical even if you don't want to and if you don't want to that's probably exactly what you should be doing mm -hmm. and it's going to help you in your personal life and your prep professional life.
You know what I what I loved when you um, mentioned this example of 3K. You downsized the challenge to people like me who are <laughs> not doing an Ironman. I love that. You know uh, the the way you you made it um, doable. Thank you for that, yeah. Joe. Yeah, Joe. Um, wh one question: I, I had the um, the luck to I think travel three times to to California. Uh, so um, you know, being in in trainings for HP, I think it was at that time. And you know, my question is: Why people? I mean, the myth: Silicon Valley, California. Why do you think that companies are so successful there? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. I think um, it started back in the day of HP and in Palo Alto when they were, when, you know, computers were in their infancy and, and, you know, there were people in their garages just building things and it just happened to birth in California. Mm. And there wasn't this power, this, you know, is it Martin Friedman? I forgot who wrote that book, The World is Flat. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it's Friedman. I think it's Friedman. Friedman. I, I forget his first Milton. name. Milton. But we didn't have the power of the internet and things. So things began to spread within that circle of Silicon Valley and attracted people. And people said, that's where the smart, that that's where people go to birth the next generation of company. And it just, it grew like a tree that was planted there. And then it's, it's, it's seeds fell off the tree and you know, and they said, I'm going to go start this company and I'm going to start it in San Jose and I'm going to start this company and I'm going to start it in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. And that Silicon Valley just began to grow and expand with the seeds. Um, you know, today, today you, you see that the next generation of whatever it is, is anywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just like podcasting, right? I mean, mm -hmm. podcasting grew out of, you know, there's a few individuals that say, um, like Tim Ferriss, who's got a huge podcast following. He said, if I was to start a podcast today, my podcast wouldn't be nearly as successful because he was in the early days and that was the seed that started the podcast movement, right? And I believe that's the same in the Silicon Valley. And it just began to grow and grow and grow. And now, you know, there's no real difference to where you're in the Silicon Valley, New York, Mumbai, you know, uh, mm. Munich, London, uh, you know, Los Angeles, wherever. Now it's it's popping up everywhere. And I don't think the Silicon Valley while it has that 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 historical reference, it's not like you have to go there to find the best and the brightest anymore. That's a, a very very interesting uh, approach, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I can't really judge, but I can follow your your thought for for sure. Yeah, yeah. you can. I mean, basically, you can uh, build your own uh, Silicon Valley wherever you want. Yes, today, yeah. now, yes. you know. Yes. That wasn't the case, you know, 30, mm -hmm. 40 years ago, but today. Mm -hmm. yes. Excellent. Joe, I thank you so much for, for your time. Uh, for me, at least, it was a very insightful and inspirational discussion with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Paco. And I'm grateful for you to be in service to your community and the LinkedIn community and bringing, I mean, it's just a powerful thing that you're bringing to young people and i hope as many young people can see this because it's a wonderful thing you're doing in service to others here um and i'm grateful that you reached out to me to to, to join this so thank you so much for doing this it was my pleasure is uh, completely on 
on my side, how to say. Thank, thank you, Joe. Have a nice rest of the day. Yeah, you too.